Hey, so what's up guys? I actually wanted to talk to you about this class, the amplifier, and explain to you how you can build your own. So, I actually spent about two weeks on this design. So, I'll just take some time to walk you through the board layout to give you an idea of how you can design your own class, the amplifier. So, we have our audio input coming in here. This is a passive summer circuit with these two 10k resistors. It sums the stereo signal that comes in here into a mono signal and this is fed into an up amp. Now this up amp we have adjustable gain via potentiometer and this up amp forms one part of the input into a comparator inside of this picker controller here. On this side we have the XR2206 IC that's acting as a triangle wave generator and um, it generates a frequency of around 270 kilohertz and that output since this IC runs at 12 um, 12 volts we have another up amp that keeps you threshold from 12 volts it keeps you threshold to around um, 4.6 volts max and this input is fed to the other end of the comparator within the um, pick microcontroller for modulation. Um, that modulated signal is then driven by the um, these pick microcontrollers. This one here is the pick um, 16F 171X family device, and um, it features the core independent peripherals, and one of them is the complementary waveform generator so while this is a whole other pick we don't really need all this we don't even need all this processing power because we essentially use any pick to read the comparator and then do complementary um, output waveform generation and that will drive these two these two half bridge drivers right here so this is a bridge tied loan configuration we have two edge bridge designs um, and what that what that allows us to do is we could use a single supply. So whereas other designs will use you know like a half bridge configuration with this bridge side load um, full edge bridge drive, we use four MOSFETs and um, we have a dual pole um, output filter here, and um, it's actually pretty um pretty quiet at idle. Let me fire it up and I can show you the idle frequent the idle um power consumption. See it's very silent and it consumes just around 460 uh, milliamps at 12.3 volts. So let me um put some song then so you guys can hear how it, how it performs. You get a little bit of white noise there. It's actually pretty loud um you get a lot of bass and um so as you can hear the amp is very um it's very um loud get nice bass tones you can probably get around you know 20 25 watts a power that is probably up to 30 watts um the limit is these um gear drivers they only work up to um 20 volts but once you if you use discrete gear drivers or you know use um gear drivers can handle a higher higher level voltage you might be able to get more power out of it and you know it, it's a bit mostly the only power ratings on this thing because you know 12 volts at a, at the arm that is like 12 watts um 12 watts of power to be honest um you know might be even less after i account for switching losses and stuff but there's a reason why all these audio manufacturers get out with the deceptive marketing because um it's actually, it's actually um really loud you know you'll never really get you know 30 watts from a 30 watt um power amp you know especially designed for that 
But um, anyway, so some things you want to pay attention to. Now, I'm aware that this um, Pic Micro Controller in particular has onboard up amps. So you could probably do triangle generation there. But I really wanted to use a discrete, discrete solution, you know, using some of the shelf um, parts. Because the whole idea behind this amp is that I actually wanted to um, build a, this is actually for a bass guitar. And I actually wanted to build an arm that you could use with off the shelf components. Anyone would be able to copy the design, reference the design. And this one um, works really well. So we have the XR2 and 206. You could use any other function generator here. Or you could even use, like, um, you know, an up arm circuit. Uh, where I think if you put a, you can configure the up arm to oscillate and then use an integrator. And with the combination of the square wave and integrator, you could get a triangle wave output. I think that is what a lot of people do it. Or you could use, um, I looked at the app note microchip hard and they used a programmable RAM generator with, you know, one of the corner independent peripherals on their pick MCUs as well. So there's a lot of options you could use to um, actually generate triangle waveform. And that triangle waveform is the most important part of this circuit. If you don't have a good triangle waveform generator generation, then what you'll see happening is that um, you'll get a lot of noise in your output because the triangle wave is responsible for modulating the sine wave coming from your input. Some other things to pay attention to, you need on your input, you need this um, large cap, you need uh, 40, you know, um, this 4700 microfarad, and you also need a large cap by the gate drivers as well, um, your output, your output inductors. Now these are proper class D um, shielded inductors. These are made specifically for audio applications. So you want um, something similar to this. You might be able to use, um, you know, your regular shielded inductors, but they might heat up and stuff. This app will run cool. Um, the reason I have these heat sinks here is because these are the RF, this is the RF 540 and 9540. Um, the 9540 in particular, that P-channel MOSFET, it tends to run um, a little warm. It tends to get warm. I haven't experienced it with this amp yet because of the load, but it, you know, if you're under high voltage, it may get warm. You know that RDS on rating is um, very important. So pay attention to that, that RDS on rating of your MOSFETs. But I chose MOSFET just to prove that they could use, you know, really off-the-shelf parts. And get this going you know handling the modulation to the um complementary um waveform output is very important because you want to have a low dead time i'll put in a, a picture here so you could see what the dead time looks like you want to keep the dead time to around 100 nanoseconds or less because if you if you have too much dead time it will come it will make your audio very distorted um some other things um i want to talk to you about is I'll put that picture so you can see how your sine wave should be fitting with any triangle wave. So, you know, um, you could generate a 1 kilohertz sine wave from a function generator. And from that, um, that 1 hertz, 1 kilohertz sine wave, you'll be able to do all of your, um, actually do all of your testing and stuff of the circuit. Now, let's look at the underside of the board because this is important. So, of course, I'll even do a PCB layout, but when you're building these type of boards, you want to use, um, you know, if, if you have zero ohm resistors, you know, the nice um, zero ohm resistors. I wonder if I have any, I can show you all. Yeah, like these, you know, these nice zero ohm resistors, you want to use these as much as possible. You want to keep your connection short and you want to use solid um, solid solar traces wherever possible for audio stuff. Um, you know, try to add your bypass caps wherever possible. Now, something you want to avoid. This is an older design I have here. Um, parts already pulled off, but just to show you all. You know, this was, this was um, first testing. These type of wires and stuff... Um, they can cause ground loops to occur if you don't um, track them properly and 
you know you want to avoid this kind of stuff now something you could do which is what i experimented with this design is if you have a mosfet with a poor rds one um you could actually look at uh asymmetrical h bridge so the rf um 540 um in general mosfet has a very low rds so not very low but it's low um it's low enough that they could handle this type of load without even getting warm the rf 9540 which is the um the p and equivalent of this mosfet tends to get a little warm because of the higher rds zone so what you want to do is you could actually use these in parallel with you know one in channel so it's kind of asymmetrical because usually in a h bridge you, know, you have one p channel one in channel or you have your um you know a driver that can handle high side and low side driving with internal mosfets but to keep things simple you know you might just want to use uh especially with this tc4420 for microchip um you know it's very easy to drive two you know um fets that one np and one um one n channel one p channel you know so that's something you could also look at so you actually don't need you know this big microcontroller um something like a small you know a small 12f um 1572 you know i have, I have some here you know these nice eight bin eight um pin microcontrollers you could actually use something like that to do a design like this because what you really need is you know your, your um, modulation taking place between the um your sine wave and a triangle wave you're going to your um, comparator input into the complementary waveform generator and then easy to drive two separate eight bridges you know to avoid the split split power supplies and stuff like that you know it, it does make stuff a whole lot easier to do this sort of bridge side load design so um that's it for this design um it, it works it works pretty well um no complaints with this design i said oh one other thing to consider um try to avoid with the exception of a few bypass caps try to avoid using ceramic caps as much as possible you know these ceramic caps um ceramic caps have some ringing with them and you know if you want nice um you know film capacitors you know um tantalum and stuff electrolytic but avoid the ceramic as much as possible so um that's it thanks for watching you know it takes a lot of um, tune and to get everything right especially the triangle wave um section if your triangle wave is, is isn't good the whole system um wouldn't work that's it guys thanks for watching be sure to like and subscribe